So you used to knit in the in the house sometimes too, right? Definitely in Parliament, because it was just like, oh, God, these people are driving me insane. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, can, can go you... on a bit sometimes. Yeah, 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 yeah. can you all just shush? Thank you so much for having us in your space. It's I'm all good. really excited about doing this one. I think it's going to be fun. <laughs> I hope so. I think we're doing something a bit different today, right? You're going to do some do some stitching? Yeah. I'm not much of a drawer, but I am a, I am a stitcher. So I, like I figured like that it. might be kind of similar, different. I feel like it's in the same world. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think the definition is. of yeah. drawing is pretty broad, <laughs> right? Um, did you have an idea of, of, of what we could be working on? So, like, I'm quite keen okay. on, like, old lady superheroes. Okay, sure, yeah, it's okay. It's my kind yep. of, like, cool. thing at yep. the moment, yeah. Okay. So, you up for that? Uh, old lady superheroes, that sounds good, yeah. Old, old is important. Okay, cool, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool, I'm thinking of my, my, when I think of an old lady, I think of my gran. For me, she was someone that, that showed me lots about art, actually. Funny that you bring oh, that okay. up, because she was really interested in sculpture. And she lived in Auckland. We used to visit her, and yeah. she used to be always take me to cool sculpture exhibitions each time i come to visit her. Um, I think she probably saw that I was interested in that stuff, so yeah, it was kind yeah, of a yeah. thing that we connected over. Oh, that's awesome. That's yeah. really cool. So what are you, what, what are you going to stitch? I yeah. will stitch... What well, could be one of his superpowers. OK. How does that sound? Amazing. I love it. That <laughs> okay, sounds cool. fantastic. All right. What a great idea. So, you've been an activist and a lawyer and an MP and then the co-leader of the Green Party, and these days you're an artist. How do you introduce yourself these days? <laughs> <laughs> oh, ah. I, actually, I'm trying to use the word artist more and get used to it in my mouth, you know? Mm. Like, actually, yeah, I remember that when Own I was co-leader. Yeah. yeah, when I was co-leader of the Greens, and people would ring up and say, you know, for interviews, and I'd have to say what my job was, and I'd always giggle, like, say co-leader and then giggle, like... A, Dork, Can't quite but believe it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, mm. yeah. Trying to get used to the word artist, I think that's good. Cool. Were you interested in art as a as a kid? Yeah, I used to make a lot of stuff, just like with boxes and glue and stuff like that. But I never really thought I was like arty, if you know what I mean. Right. I just was always making stuff. I'd sew and knit right. and glue stuff together. And it sounds like it was a somewhat creative environment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, my mother was a um, still is a, she's um, incredibly creative. So she weaves and has always knitted and stuff. So she taught us how to do it. Mm. So she was always really into it. But it was never like you never was not like a career option at that stage when you were a kid. It was no, 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 no. I never thought that would be the sort of thing I would want to do. Yeah. Um, I did want to be a solid gold dancer. Okay. At one point, so cool. you know, because <laughs> who wouldn't? Who wouldn't? Yeah, that sounds pretty fun. <laughs> Fairly early on, you're into activism and stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I got um, politically kind of active in the '80s, about 17 or 18. Started getting involved with the unemployed rights movement then, mm -hmm. which was really big. It was heating up because unemployment. There was a big surge in unemployment after the um, Labor's economic reforms yep. in the 80s, yep. yeah. That was the politicisation process, if you like, for me, like mm. kind of trying to understand how uh, law and politics affects ordinary life. Unless people are talking to you about the sort of thing where you live in that environment, it's really hard to see how those things, things are connected. And when you do, it's just like, fucking fight the power like the bastard. So you yeah. just kind of like get quite into it, what yeah. I did. Yeah. But it was very real, because people were really doing it hard, mm. you know. Um, and so it felt like that we were actually on the side of the angels, mm. you know, trying to make good change. Mm. Actually, I'm ready to stitch, I think, now. Yeah? Yeah. Cool, OK. So Let's do it. Can we move you the know, thing? I mean, it's like a really cool drawing thing, and I can totally see why you would have one. But <laughs> oh, you gotta, gotta do your do your thing. I'm looking forward to seeing, looking forward to seeing how this all works. Thank you. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, sweet yeah, Threads there. Um, so I was involved with unemployed rights um, a little bit in Wellington and a bit in um, in Palmerston North, the Workers' Unemployed Rights Centre there, uh -huh. and it was a. 
it was a movement that was um, supported really well by the unions because we were supporting workers who had been made unemployed, so mm. our job was to advocate for them. Well, I was also involved with um, this fantastic group of anarchist women, the Random Trollops, right. and we were <laughs> travelling around the country and doing heaps of like anarcho-feminist performance stuff. Cool. Okay. Yeah, which was really cool, and I was ah, doing heaps of really. costuming. Yeah. So, All right, that, okay. so I was performing. So that sort of ties it. back to where you're, where yeah, you're, yeah, what yeah. you're doing these days. Yeah, so it's just like creating a hell of a mess, but um, <laughs> making all sorts of fabulous costumes, devil costumes and oh. cat disc costumes, and I so just that all was sort of, of part theatre and part activism kind of. Work. Yeah, there were some really powerful women um, involved at the time, people like Val Smith and um, Katie Julian and a whole bunch of others. I was friends with all these guys, so. Yeah, we just started doing performances. Um, what does a random Charlotte's performance yeah. look like? What's, what happened? Uh, well, <laughs> well, it was eclectic. Okay. And um, so uh, we did a, like our opening kind of show piece was this thing that involved um, a meditation tape and a lot of screaming on our part. The meditation tape was playing at one point and a lot of screaming just slightly afterwards, okay, yep. uh, which is very cathartic, mm. actually, it turns out. Yeah. That whole screaming therapy is actually a good idea for lots of good reasons. Yep. Um, um, we did things with devilettes. Oh, we did a great one once with um, Pro Nandor. This is in the uh, yep. <laughs> years. Called Satanic Sex, where we got him on stage. Uh, I think he was sort of, he was pretty famous then. I don't think he was an MP, but he was pretty famous. Mm. And wrapped him head to toe in glad wrap. Danced <laughs> around him for a while, like gave everyone a lesson on, you know, safe sex, <laughs> safe satanic sex, and then left him on Amazing. stage. Amazing. And I don't know, we all just we went off stage, got ready for the next bit, but mm. um, he had plastic all over his face. <laughs> yeah, and so somebody from the audience had to go and rescue him. <laughs> Like, Actually, yeah. yeah, and what they did, they just like made a little hole for him to breathe in, right. like and left him on the stage. Right. <laughs> Apparently, he just bounced off, like because he was completely wrapped up. Yeah, stuff like that. Amazing. It, it was so slightly dangerous. Yeah. yeah, but it was really, it was really fun. I was going to ask about the McGillicuddy's too, sort of around that time yeah, too, right? Yeah, yeah. Like the first time you ran was for the McGillicuddy's, yeah, yeah. which seems like a combination of like the sort of politics, sort of parliamentary politics on the one hand, and art and activism on the other hand. Like, seems like McGillicuddy sits in the middle of that quite nicely. Yeah, I guess as they well. do actually. I mean, because they were, um, you know, they were a political movement all about the farce of parliamentary politics mm. and the farce of that, that whole, um, the whole system. So, but also incredibly creative. It was such a great way to explore politics in a way that was, um, you know, was relevant and used all of the skills that I developed as part of um, the unemployed rights movement stuff. But, but it was also fun and light, mm. and light enough so you didn't feel like you are just being kind of in this turgid, anti kind yeah. of conflict ridden state all the time. Right. I guess which activism really can get quite a this sort of this aggressive side to it or a like an angry side to it. I yeah. suppose that it's kind of doing yeah. things in a fun way. There's yeah. some, some value yeah, yeah, yeah. in that too. Yeah. And like and just being prepared to take the piss. Like one of the you know things that we we treat politics very seriously because it has a really serious effect, but it's also a ridiculous system that we create ourselves. So mm. we impose all these rules on ourselves and then get pissed about them. There is an element of um, you know, societal kind of agreement that this is the system that we right. have. I mean, it's not perfect. That you can poke fun at it. Yeah, you can. Well. Yeah, yeah, you don't have to take it seriously all the time. You can yeah. actually have a bit of a laugh. Well, yeah. it seems like such a jump from that world to fast forward a few years and suddenly <laughs> you're, you're in Parliament. Parliament. How did that come about? Like, was it, what was the inspiration that made you get involved in the Greens and, and sort of start taking, taking I politics more <laughs> in the sort of conventional sense more yeah. seriously? Um, I, uh, being useful, I've always liked being useful. Um, and when um, I got my first law job in 99, but I 
also got married and a whole lot of other stuff was going on. Mm. So it was my year of political silence and I decided okay. I would do no politics. I would have okay. some fun, but even then the fun stuff I had to like keep to a minimum because I really just needed to focus on life things yeah. and running, yep. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it was also the 99 election where the Greens got elected and Nando got elected mm. and Sue got elected and were, like, you know, people Sue that... Sue Bradford. Yeah, yep. Sue Bradford. People yep. I'd worked with and, you know, friends that known for a long, long time. And I was like, oh, what a shit year for political silence. <laughs> but um, after that, <laughs> in 2000, like, almost immediately afterwards, mm. um, Nando um, rang and asked if I would get involved with the Greens because the Greens were looking at doing some stuff on their Māori policy. Uh-huh. And, and particularly on how it is that um, a Pākehā organisation can have an authentic approach to this stuff. It's all good having something in your constitution, but mm. how do you make it real? How and it's, it? it's yeah. really hard work. Mm. Um, so I got involved because it seemed like something I could do that was useful and mm. it was a good group of people and it just kind of kept going from there. So I joined in February of 2000 and then I became an MP in 2002. So it was, a, it was a pretty quick. Did that involve sort of some political compromises or, or personal compromises being sort of joining Parliament? You know, um, a sort of a toning down or something? Did you feel like you had to do that or...? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I thought I did. I wasn't necessarily very good at it. Um, <laughs> uh, I got into big trouble on the steps of um, Parliament, the very first protest, because 2002 had been an election based on race and there was a... Uh, New, New Zealand First was going around being really hot. Hideous. Mm. Um, and so there was this big protest at Parliament about it. <laughs> so I stood on the steps of Parliament and said, you know, we Maldives have more in common with um, immigrants than we do with our colonial presses. And everyone was like, yeah, except for everybody who I worked with were like, oh, God. Like inside, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <What> <laughs> it was inside? probably a little on the nose, but, you know, mm. oh well. Um, you know, I got into trouble with that. People were writing me letters like <laughs> threatening to cut my head off and wow. boil it in pots. I know, it really was like full on. Proper intro to like I know. all of New Zealand. Like. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. I really didn't sort of like think that was really that controversial. But um, mm-hmm. the activism was really essential. I don't, I mean, because what it did was gave me a chance to see how the interface between the parliament and and communities. I mean, mm. I'd done some of that. I'd written submissions and things as an activist and, you know, presented select committees and that sort of thing before. Mm. Um, but to be on the other side too, it meant that, you know, I had a better idea about how maybe to treat people or, you know, when, when people come and they tell you something at select committee, it's a little bit easier to understand what they're trying to tell you, even if the words aren't quite right that right. they're saying, yeah. you know, to actually understand where they're coming from. Yeah. Because I've been on that side of it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I was going to ask you about that, whether that was that having been on both sides of it would, would in, inform the way you acted in, oh, totally. in Parliament, for sure. Yeah, totally, totally. And, um, um, and really importantly, like, I just, I just think that if you don't... If you've only been on the privileged side of these things, and, of course, you're only ever going to understand... Um, you're only going to understand the community that you belong to, mm. really. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, people who come from privilege who are exercising that power there are only going to see it in terms of assisting with the maintenance of privilege. And But also, like, from my point of view, I mean, sometimes um, when I reflect back on this a bit, it's like, well, you know, I, did I um, take enough opportunity to to work with people that were really different from me in order to get mm. gains and stuff? And I don't know that I did, because I also right. had come from an oppositional... Kind sure. of community, right? Yeah, so that's yeah. how I kind of approach the exercise of power. Yeah, and it's there. you against the man, or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, yeah. so I, I did this. I did. I was sort of inside my own kind of silo to some extent, just like um, yeah. the people who have privilege who were. One other thing that I that I think of, when I think of your time, was the in 2015 when you led a walkout of women MPs out of the out oh, of the house. Oh yeah, over... yeah. So um, in a fight between National and Labour in the House one day, John Key accused Labour of supporting rapists and murderers. It was yeah, it was it was just a 
shitty. It was a shitty thing to say. Question number four, Materia Turay. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My question is to the Prime Minister and asks, does he stand by his statement, well, you back rapists? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, yes. There were points of order, I think at the time or just after, about um, in, in the chamber asking him to withdraw and apologise, and he wouldn't, and the Speaker wouldn't make him because he didn't consider it to be an offensive statement to, to make. And But actually, it was incredibly offensive because to use, to make this, especially because he was talking about the opposition as a whole, not just Labour, but he was talking about all people who were um, on that issue. It was like, well, you know, you're, talk, you're talking to people who actually have been victims of sexual assaults, that they are now supporters of, of rapists. Right, you it's not a term you throw it. around you lightly. No, you can't just throw it around. And it was offensive. So I went down into the chamber after thinking about it for a while um, and made a point of order at question time that uh, I took personal offence to the statement um, as a victim of a sexual assault. Point of order, Materia Ture. So the Prime Minister has consistently supported his statement of yesterday. He has order, can, order, can I just, that statement. Can I, order, can I ask he be order. made to apologise and withdraw order. because I have taken personal offence as a victim of sexual the, assault? Order. I remind the member where I stand, it's time for the member to cease speaking. That's not a point of order. The member, has, the Prime Minister's answer, has said nothing that is unparliamentary in that answer. We were trying to get the Speaker to understand that, that it, was a, it was an offensive statement to make. You know, you can't call anybody a racist. You can't, there's lots of words you can't use in Parliament mm. with other people. It's not a theoretical thing. It no, actually it actually has a it, real effect yeah, on people's right. lives. Yeah, that's right. So maybe if, if we were saying to him, like, we know what that experience is, can you not see how offensive it is? And like, yeah. But he refused. The Speaker refused to make John Key apologise. Um, John refused to apologise. And so a whole lot of women stood up and said, you know, I took the same point of order and we were all kicked out. As a victim and survivor of family violence and an advocate for victims of violence, I take personal offence at the comments of the Prime Minister order, and ask him order. to withdraw. No, we're now getting into the stage when there could be a series of these points of orders. Jan Logie, point of order. As a victim of sexual assault and an advocate for survivors, order, I would order, ask that the order, record be... Order. As a victim of sexual order, assault, order. I member take will personal offence would like order, to ask for a the personal member explanation. will resume her seat. As a trustee of the Waikato Women's Refuge Te Whakarudu Ho, I take personal order, offence... Order, order, the, the member will resume her seat. As a victim order, of sexual member, violence... And order, the member will leave the, ch the... Order, the member will leave the chamber. They were incredibly brave and amazing, those women, actually, that to, to, to stand up and be prepared to be counted like that. Um, and, you know, it, it's, it was a very... It's a personally very revealing thing to do. But at the same time, these issues have to be made real in the Parliament. They are not um, obscure intellectual kind of points of argument. Mm. It's not these just are... a theoretical thing, no, it's in real it's life. Not. It's real, real life. And, yeah. um, and there are people, they're not just women too, there'll be men in that chamber mm. um, who have su suffered a sexual assault as well. Yeah. And that they, the whole concept of that just can't be treated that lightly. Um, yeah, you must have been mistake. watching the stuff that's been going on, a quite inquiry into like mm. bullying in the in yep. parliament and stuff is sort of very relevant to that, yeah. to that yeah, conversation. Yeah, 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 yeah. Was that something, seeing that that was, that now that's sort of coming out a little bit, they seem to be going through a process of self-examination of like, is this a healthy workplace or is this a... Oh, it's so good. It's such a good thing to, for them to be doing. And, mm. it, um, and I know it's really tricky and there's, you know, there's issues with, but there always will be, like it's never going to be a perfect inquiry and mm. there never can be. Yeah. But um, the you know, there were all sorts of stories all the time about behaviour. Um, not necessarily sexual shenanigans or mm. sexual assault behaviour, but just um, aggressive, um, you know, shitty behaviour. And yeah, MPs are to a large degree protected yeah. Yeah, by the by the rules. And it's a hard one to figure out how to both protect people politically mm. 
as well as um, protect kind victims of, of actual workplace. assault. Yeah. 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 Yeah, 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 yeah. It seemed like along with there was lots of sort of conversation. It's like, well, that's just the nature of it. It's a competitive place with strong-willed people, and you know, people are sort of are going to butt heads or something. But it seemed like there must be a line where it's like that's not butting heads. <laughs> yeah, that's like yeah, yeah. It's yeah, not. There's, there's there's definitely a line, and then that, the fact that they're being prepared to to you know look at it for real was good. Mm. It's really good. And. The 2017 election, without getting into it too much. <laughs> yeah, because like it totally sucked. <laughs> yeah, sorry, Karen. <laughs> what, what, obviously, it was a roller coaster for all New Zealanders. Like it was a very yeah. you know twists and turns and a million different things happening. To you, what's the one? Do you have one sort of enduring memory of that time? If it was sore. <sighs> Far too many is probably the answer. Um, we got the highest poll the Greens have ever had um, in the week after my speech. Um, I think that um, something had to happen to make a change of government a possibility, a real possibility, and nothing was going to change because everybody was just running the election like same it's always the same. Old. That everyone yeah. always says. Yeah, 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 yeah. And even even then, it was really close. Um, so, yeah. So I'm I'm proud of the speech. I'm really proud of the speech, and always will be. I think it was absolutely the right thing to do, and um, always will, always yeah. will. Um, and I'm proud of the uh, the activism that it created and the conversation it created. Like you know, Sam, mm. you know, he did an amazing job. Yeah, that was a directly job. result yeah. of that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, out of like taking all of that passion and turning it into something really concrete, and that's that's what needed to happen because those people hadn't been heard at all for such a long time. So you know, as traumatic as it was for like a ton of us, um, the outcome that I wanted mm. was achieved. It seemed to me anyway, as an outside observer, that, that you came to represent a sort of a voice for women and for Māori and for people that might not necessarily have, a, have so much of a voice, beneficiaries, or was yeah. that something that was sort of present in your mind? Oh, at that always, time? always, every day. I mean, like, um, Yeah, there's no point me being, <laughs> being there if it's not if for you're them. Not like, the... I mean, it's great. It was a great job, and um, and I really appreciated the job and all the things that having a job for that long period of time delivers. Mm. But um, you know, and you can get selfish, I think, inside there. But um, I never wanted to do that. Right, that you're looking out for your career rather than your the yeah. people that you're representing. <laughs> yeah. Easy to I think I'm a perfect demonstration of not doing that. Right? <laughs> not putting my career first. <laughs> Just saying. Funny, Simon. Yeah, I see what you're saying. And following the election, he obviously had a massive life change, right? It was mm. to... Oh my god, I slept for like <laughs> two months. Yeah. yeah. I tell you, if you ever get a chance to do this, and mm. like hardly ever people people don't generally, but like being able to sleep any time you want for as long as you like, <laughs> it's just like, oh my god. That sounds incredible. Work. It was really yeah. amazing. Yeah. 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 So yeah. there was that. Yeah. And after that, after I woke up mm. and stopped sleeping, yeah, there was quite a big change. school because it was something I always wanted to see if I was any good at. Like I've been doing stitching and knitting and making for such a long time and I was trying to think well okay so I don't want to do go straight into politics. I'm not going to run for local government. Um, I'm not going to do any of those kind of, I'm not going to be a consultant mm. for someone in terms of lobbying. I don't want to do any of that. Right. I want to we'll clean break. Law, it's not oh, well no it was a possibility and I do work in the law now sort of. Mm. Um, I'm a research fellow at the university, so I work at the Faculty of right, Law okay. here um, part-time. But, but I really wanted to just try and learn something new. One of the things that I tried very hard to do at Parliament, which I just failed dismally, was, um, was to try to find a new way of, of thinking about parliamentary work, um, like a design thinking, which is now a thing, but was not a thing then. Mm. Um, but I'm always kind of looking for new ways of thinking about stuff and new ways of doing things. Um, so I thought, oh, well, this is a chance to actually do something completely different. So, um, yeah, so I applied. I didn't have a portfolio, really, or anything, but they were like, oh, yeah, come and have a go. So um, I did my graduate diploma um, in visual art last year, um, and it was fantastic. Like, it's just... 
it's really scary doing something completely new like this. The making isn't new, but having people look at it mm. um, and try to assess whether it's any good, that's all new. Yeah. Um, thinking about being an artist is completely new. But I, but I, I kind of thought, well, if I don't think about it like art, because it's a bit freaky, but think about it as communication, but mm. with things, not with words. Well, then it kind of made more sense. My, my political work and my creative work have all been around people. Like, you know, people are really important to me. And so um, doing garment kind of based textile art means that I can put people really centre in the work I'm doing. So with the Tūrua Pool work, there was three Māori women, um, two old goddesses, Kūranga Tuku, and, and then a younger woman, the Austronesian, you know, the first Polynesian in space, with her moko kawai and stuff. They needed to be embodied, like the things without the person inside them don't mm. have, there's no conversation. I can't, I, I don't think there's a conversation to be had. Mm. Um, the next piece of work I'm doing is um, for the Tūrua 250, Oh, that's a bit messy. The Tui 250 um, protest exhibition, um, which is in November, and that too is going to... Ha it's about the three Māori babies a week who are stolen by um, Oranga and Tamariki, right, okay. yeah, which I'm, like, furious, but I'm trying not to talk. Right, yep. I'm trying to make. Yep. Um, so, yeah, and, and that will be based on the women, on the mothers. Mm -hmm. And, again, it's a way of... I need to put those women into the piece so that these garments will be wearable even though they'll be, mm. you, know, you know, hung without a person in it, obviously. Um, but they're about people, they're sort of for people. Yeah, they're for people and about the people. And mm. so they need to be able to have a relationship with the body. Yeah. Um, and a very direct one. I don't think I could make anything that couldn't be worn because mm. I just don't feel like it, it... It's not properly activated. It doesn't exist in the real... Like it's living person. or something. It yeah, has to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For me, anyway. I know other people do it differently, but I mm. need the person inside. It yeah. seems like lots of the themes of your work now are similar to the themes of your political career. Like, it's still <laughs> yeah. kind of the yeah. same things that you care about. It's just... Um, yeah. Is it a sort of a different means to the same ends? Yeah, because yeah, I've kind of trying very hard not to speak pu politically, but to do art in a political way, um, or at least with some political ideas. So um, the work, my Tūrua Pō, Astronesian work, mm -hmm. is all about um, uh, Māori's being self-determining and in space, you know, because, you know, there's the whole Afrofuturism thing took mm -hmm. off last year with Black Panther, and yep. it's a fantastic theory, like mm -hmm. a, a creative theory to be part of, where... Yep. Black people are centred in the universe and they're centred in technology and have absolute self-determination. Mm. And it's not that you ignore your history for them, like, in terms of the Middle Passage and, and for us here in terms of colonisation, but that you totally recreate the future for yourself. Mm. Um, and, yeah, I was just like, oh, that's my God. That's a it's super exciting idea, yeah. <laughs> really, really is. It really, really is. Because it means that you everything that you've suffered becomes... A skill set that you've learnt, mm. and and you then you that's how you treat your experience, and mm. I think that that was just like it was so cool. Looking back now at you know when you watch the news or whatever, do you feel a sense of relief that sort of that you're out of that world, or is it a you, do you miss it? Oh yes and no. So um, you know some days I miss it when I see people see people who are doing certain jobs and think, oh you're doing a shit one. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, could you could you just like. You know, we fought really hard to get you fellas in government. Can you please just do it properly? Um, I really like shouting at the tally. It's great. Mm. It's like, ah, oh, in the radio, it's awesome. But, um, but I wouldn't go back. Being able to wake up in your own bed and live your own life and um, not be in such an aggressive environment is just so fantastic. Um, and plus, I just think too that you know, there's a time when you make your contribution and you move on. It's like this, it's, it's not a job for life. That one. Well, look, I mean, okay, for Winston, right? Okay. Right. Yeah. <laughs> we get Special some. case. Yeah. 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 But they're doing good. They're doing good. The new generation of MP is a whole new beast, mm. and thankfully so. Yeah. So you're not in, not in direct contact with those people on oh, a day-to-day -day basis, yeah. or you? Oh, not on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah. Oh God, that would be just. I might as well just still be employed by them. <laughs> True. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For my own head's sake, I need to, like, not be doing the job, even by remote, you know? Mm. Um, because other people who have got my job now, I must say they're doing a fantastic job, Marama. Um, other people are doing my job and they, don't, they just don't need 
me, you know, grumping from the, right. you know, back room. Right. Um, it's a hard enough job to do anyway. And two, I really do need to, like, step away. Like, mm. it's, you know... It's a it, new, new time. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And um, I've always been pretty good at that kind of compartmentalisation. <laughs> but also, I just think, um, yeah, there's a time... You can't just do shouting from the background and expect that um, you'll be able to move on yourself, you know? Mm. Yeah, so... That's, that's awesome. fine. A very healthy approach. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. I hope so. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, semi-retired life is not too bloody bad. I mean, I'm really pleased with um, the resilience of the organisation, actually, um, which sounds a bit sort of nerdy, but, you know, when you've led an organisation for a very long time, you don't... You want it to be real strong. Mm. Yeah. And they are, so that's great. Yeah. And they're in government and they're doing amazing things, just like they... You know, like, we yeah. always promised we would, and that's, that's marvellous. to fix me, fix you. Oh, I don't know. Oh, so I think I'm done. Are you, you ready? Yeah. I'm, <laughs> I'm looking yes, forward to seeing yes, this. I'm looking I'm forward ready. to seeing yep. this. Say That's yes. Good. Lean right. forward. So, here she is. Here's my, <laughs> here's my grand pan. Oh. She's got like a cape and everything. <laughs> yeah, didn't I couldn't picture her being that different, being superhero, you know? Like I figured like it's just <laughs> her, but I thought maybe the shawl flying is a bit a bit her as, yeah, the, as totally the superhero. Is. Yeah. Cool. Oh, she's gorgeous. All right. So I show you my Yeah, I'm looking forward now. to seeing this. I can't, okay. I can't wait. It's Granny's <laughs> Fanny. Amazing. I love it. And her secret superpower. I love it. Is that teeth? That is teeth. I love it's it. called vagina dentata. I love it. Yep. Yep. Powerful. I love Powerful. It. Yep. That's right. Yep. 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 No Out of which with life her. is made. Just yeah, think. That's cool. You come from this <laughs> into the world. Yeah, that's so that's so awesome. So there you go. Oh, thank you so much. You that was amazing that. to sit and chat today. Thank you very much for inviting us into your space and thanks for being so open with us about everything. It was, it was a, all good. A great chat. It was so nice. Yeah, it was fun. Thank Lovely. you.